Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A while ago, when On One Software released Resize AI 2022, I promised that I'd be doing a video comparing it to Gigapixel AI. To tell you the truth, I totally forgot. Until yesterday, someone emailed me to remind me. So, I apologize for the delay, but today we're going to be comparing On One's Resize AI 2022 to Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI. We're going to be working on this image and we're going to be using both of those apps as a Lightroom plugin. The only reason I'm doing that is because it's easier to compare the results in Lightroom. Now, of course, those apps work as standalone applications and they work as plugins in Photoshop. Furthermore, On One's Resize AI 2022 will very soon be integrated in On One's Photo Raw. 2022 so you could use it directly in that app as well now this specific image that we're working on was shot with an icon d800e you can see there's the exposure info and the focal length i shot at and it is a significant crop if i hit the i key a couple times you could see it's 1818 by 2723 this is the raw file and there's the crop so you could see i cropped away a lot of the pixels uh, because it's 1818 by 2723, if I wanted to print this, I probably would not be able to get a high quality larger print from it because it's so small. That's where an application such as Resize AI or Gigapixel would come in. Now, I did do editing on it beside the crop, and to me it's fully edited right now, so I just want to resize it. I'll send it into Gigapixel AI first. And I'm just going to right click right on it, go down to edit in, and then down to Gigapixel AI. Now, because it's a raw file and Lightroom will not send raw files into plugins, I have to send a different type of file. By default, it's asking for a TIFF file, and that's what I'll use just the default settings here, and click edit. Now, you can see in the upper left hand corner there is a progress bar. Lightroom is creating that TIFF file with those specifications, and it will open up into Gigapixel AI. And what I like to do is I like to start out in what's called comparison view. But you can see in the top right hand corner, there's a number of different views single view, split view, side by side view, and comparison view. The reason why I like comparison view is because there's five different AI models. And with comparison view, I could look f at four of those models at one time and compare them to one another. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the navigator box over the bird's head this is a chickadee so we could see something significant in the image and compare the different AI models to one another now how large do I want to make it let's be rather modest and so I can compare apples to apples oranges to oranges I'll do a 2x enlargement here so it will go from 1818 by 2723 to 3634 by 54 46 and we'll do the same thing when we get into resize ai 2022 as well now the four ai models i have showing on screen are in the top left the standard ai model and you can see i have the setting set to auto the low resolution a model ai model is to the direct right of that and that i have the setting set to auto and the lower left is very compressed and that is set to auto as well. In the lower right is art and CG, which probably isn't applicable to this photograph. And that I have the setting set to auto as well. Now there is a fifth AI model lines. If I want to see that, I'll just pick the worst of the bunch. Let's say it's art and CG. Make sure that's active. You can tell by the blue box in the lower left hand corner. Then click on lines and it will swap out that art and CG for lines takes a second to render and there's that now if you want to see before afters just click on the image like on the standard on the top left I'll just click on it there's before and there's after and you could see how it sharpened it up quite a bit there's before and there's after similarly for low resolution there's before and there's after and for very compressed there's before and there's after and then for lines there's before and after now very compressed is the sharpest definitely of the four is it too sharp um i'm not really sure i could move the navigator window around to different parts of the image just to see and let make sure it updates you can see how it has to update each of the different views we're seeing 
but it really doesn't look overly sharp. It looks nicely sharpened to me. So I think I'll go with this very compressed um, mode. And what I typically would do then would be click on that, make that active. So that's the active mode. Go to the single view mode. So that is the only one we'll see. And I'll move the navigator window down just a little bit. Let it render. It will take a little longer to render now because it has to render more pixels. And there's uh, our image now. I moved it slightly so it has to re-render. That can be aggravating. There's before and there's after. And now what I would typically do if I feel it needs to be touched up a bit, I would come over and ignore the automatic settings and come in and move the suppress noise slider if I need to or if I want to make it sharper, go to remove blur. I also could go to the additional settings if this were art and CG or some type of line drawing. I could reduce the color bleed if needed. If it had a person in it, I could use face recovery. Face recovery works great when there's people in the image because sometimes when you resize an image with people, um, the faces tend to get overly sharpened. And with face recovery, it just softens it a little bit. And I actually did a video on that very recently. And I think face recovery works uh, well. And it is unique to Gigapixel AI. So you're, if you're often resizing images with people in them, maybe you're a wedding or an events photographer or something like that, and you're resizing images, I would recommend you go with Gigapixel AI because of face recovery. I think it's that good. I think it works well. Now, of course, that's not applicable here. So I'm just going to actually keep these default settings, these default automatic settings, and go with it just like this. I think it looks pretty good. So it's a 2x um, increase in size, and we'll click Apply. So now it's taking that uh, TIFF file. It's creating that TIFF file, I should say. And it will open up back into Lightroom. So we'll have that TIFF file there from Gigapixel AI, which is right here. Zoom in, nice and sharp. Now let's go back to our RAW file. And one thing here, notice this little uh, like postcard thing in the top right hand corner. At times, Lightroom does this. This is nothing to do with Gigapixel or any plugin. It just is a metadata conflict. Um, Lightroom has its metadata it wrote for the image, but then Gigapixel AI wrote metadata for the image, and Lightroom doesn't know which metadata is the valid metadata. So just click on this and then go to the middle setting, import settings from disk. Those are the settings from Gigapixel, and that's what we want. So we'll go with that and there it is. So this now is 2x, 3634 by 5446. And there's our original raw file. Now we're going to go back to this original raw file. Now we're going to send it into Resize AI 2022. I'm going to right click on it, go down to edit in, and then over and down to on one Resize AI 2022. Now similarly, it's a raw file, so I have to send a different type of file. Um, unlike Gigapixel AI, Resize AI prefers a PSD file. And you can see by Default, that's what's showing here, so we'll go with that. We'll click Edit. Now again, Lightroom is creating that PSD file, and it will open up into Resize AI. Now Resize AI um, has some overlap, does some of the things that Gigapixel AI does. It doesn't have all those different AI models. It does have a few different though, and we'll go into that in a moment, but not as many. And um, I think, in my opinion, Resize AI is more suited for those that print their own images. If you print your images, you have a lot of presets on the left for specific types of paper. So you could resize this so that it will print um, properly or give you a higher quality print on a specific type of paper. But we're not going to be using a preset. I just want to do a screen comparison between it and Gigapixel AI. So we're going to go over here to this right hand side and go to photo size. Now there's a lot of different ways you could go about to resize it. You could just go to this resize long edge and give it a, uh, you know, a different number here. You could go to dimensions, give it specific dimensions, short edge, width, height, megapixel. Let's go to percentage. This is the easiest way because we did a 2x enlarge in Gigapixel AI. So here we want to do 2x as well, but it's in percentage. So if I could get this highlighted, 
we'll go with 200. And you'll see once I come off this, it increased it 2x, so 36, 34 by 54, 46. So that's fine. So we're, we're all set with photo size. Now settings. This is the different models. They call it methods though, whereas uh, Gigapixel AI says they're models, here they're methods. And we have the faithful method, and we have a standard method. And you could try the different ones and see if it changes significantly. It looks like, now yeah, they look identical to me. Now if it looks a little too sharp, what I found, for lack of a better way of explaining what the slider does, but if it does look a little too like crispy sharp, uh, go to the smoothness slider, move it to the right, and it will just kind of blend everything in a little better. And in effect, it kind of blurs it slightly. So I don't need to do that with this image. So we're going to keep and keep this all the way down to zero. I am going to go to the reset. I'm going to use the Resize AI 2022 standard model. So I'm going to stay with that. Now we have a lot of options. First of all, sharpening. Let's turn that on and it's default sharpening that it went to this fix focus sharpening preset. I don't care for that one, that looks overly sharpened. We go to the screen, that one looks pretty good. There's print. You also go to this drop down, and you can see there's a lot of different presets here, including some for specific types of uh, paper, like a glossy or a portrait type, glossy portrait, and different types. I, right out of the box, like the screen, this preset, but if you don't want to use a preset, you also could come in and just move the sliders yourself and choose the type of sharpening. They have progressive, high pass, and unsharp mask. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll recognize that these are different sharpening techniques and uh, tools that are available in Photoshop. So this is very similar. And if you choose, let's say, high pass, you'll see the sliders change. Or you choose progressive, the sliders change. Unsharp mask, the sliders change. So. I'm going to go with just this screen preset and I'm going to just leave it as is. I think that looks pretty good. Um, if you want to see a before or after here, there's a little preview button here. Just click on that and hold it in. There's, or just click on it, I should say. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Um, so overall, screen is, a, is of the preset. Screen is the least amount of sharpening. I should add. Now, if I wanted to try to tweak it up a little more, I could. Maybe we'll try. We'll go to before, after. There's before, and there's after. That looks pretty good, actually. All right, now, uh, do you want to protect shadows, highlight skin? If you're doing sharpening, again, um, particularly with a portrait, you may not want to sharpen the skin. It's going to show every pore, and you may not want to do that. So you could move this skin slider to the right. That's similar to the, you know, the uh, functionality that's found in Gigapixel AI, whereas Gigapixel AI is just a, a, like a toggle switch to turn it on. Here you have a slider and you could move it. So maybe I misspoke saying that Gigapixel AI might be the better choice for those that uh, resize a lot of images with people in them. Maybe um, resize AI might be a good choice as well. They do have fully working free trials, both of the companies. So I recommend you try them out and see what works best for you. Now, I did mention though, I'm done sharpening it. I did mention that Resize AI is a good choice for those that print at home. It's because there's a lot of options here. You could add film grain to it. Um, you could, if you do tiled printing, tiled printing is when you break this down into different tiles and you could print let's say a wall sized portrait using you know eight by ten paper and then put all tile all those paper you know those prints together on the wall that's what tiling is and gallery wraps this is most often when you're um, printing on canvas and you have a frame and you're going to wrap it around the frame and you know what's the thickness of the frame? Two inches is usually the standard thickness, and you can see it gives you the um, the uh, dimensions of where this would be wrapped around the frame, and it kind of repeats the pixels. You can see all the bird's tails coming up like this, so that you know it's wrapping around, and you could do you know different. That's the reflect method. You could reflect soft, so it'll blur it a little more. 
uh, stretch. You can see how it just kind of blurs it really. Stretch soft. So you could go with these different um, different gallery wrap methods if you do gallery wraps. Now, I'm not doing that. We're just doing a comparison here, so I'll turn that off. So I think I'm satisfied. I think I sharpened it um, well, and it is um, 2x or 200%. So I'm just going to click Done, and then we'll get over and do our comparison in Lightroom. And you can see it's progress here. Also, you could you know print it directly from here. You can see over in the lower right hand corner and you could share it directly from here if you'd like. So there are uh, there is that functionality found in Resize AI. So let's get it over into Lightroom eventually. You can see it's taking a little longer I think than Gigapixel AI. And there it is. Okay, this would be easy to compare now because the PSD file is the Resize AI um thing or um version so there is that we'll zoom in there's resize ai and there's gigapixel ai is zoomed in more how come uh, maybe because see we have this little postcard thing over in the right hand corner let's go with that and import settings from disk all right there we go now let's see if the zoom works properly probably a little too zoomed. So let's hold in the command key in the Mac and just go around the bird's head right here. So we'll zoom in like that and we'll move it over there. Okay, so there is on one's resize 2022, or is that gigapixel? No, that's gigapixel AI, I apologize. And here is on, there's the original raw file. I'm having a hard time. Now let's move this to the end. All right, here is on one's resize 2022 resize AI 2022 and here is gigapixel AI there is resize AI gigapixel AI let's do it again resize AI I kind of see a lot of fine feathers right here and here is gigapixel AI yeah. resize AI Gigapixel AI. I think it's six, six of one, half a dozen of the other, as my dad used to say. Um, let's go in like on the bird's claws here. This, the TIFF file. So this is Gigapixel AI. And this is Resize AI. Gigapixel AI. Resize AI. Gigapixel AI looks a tiny bit sharper in here, but it has this weird kind of, I don't know, weird look over here i call it stretch marks almost then you come over here and it's not as odd looking it is a bit blurrier i think it's just its effort to um sharpen this made it look odd and this looks a little more natural in resize ai that's my opinion though um, but bird's head looks pretty much identical between the two so again one more time this is Gigapixel AI, it's the TIFF file. Here is Resize AI, it's the PSD file. Gigapixel AI, Resize AI. I think I might have, re, um, I might have over sharpened the Resize AI just slightly. Now you may be asking, well, why aren't we comparing it to the original raw file? Well, if I click on that, because that's different dimensions, it's not going to be a good comparison because it's zoomed out more. So it's really impossible to compare it to that properly. So there is Gigapixel AI and Resize AI. That's it. Let me know what you think is better in the comments below. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>